All right then ninjas, so, so far when we're nesting this ninjas component down here, for each one, we're only outputting one individual ninja to the DOM. So we're passing the props of that ninja down to that component, but instead it would be good if we could pass a list of ninjas down into this one component, then inside that component we receive that list of ninjas, cycle through them and output each ninja in this component. So let's try doing that. Now since we're passing a list of ninjas down into one of these components, we don't need to output them twice because they're all going to be going into the same single component. And instead of defining that list as props on the component directly, what I'll do is define that data up here in the state. So we'll create a state object and then we'll pass that property of the state down into this component. So I'm going to create a property called ninjas and this is going to be an array. Now I'm just going to paste this array of objects in right here. So there's three objects. Each one has a name. It has an age, a belt color and an ID property. And we'll come to that ID property and why I've added it later on. But for now, just worry about we have a name, an age and a belt for each different ninja inside this array. So each array item is an object. OK, so the idea is, is that we're going to pass this array down into this component, we're going to receive that array as a prop right here. We're going to cycle through it and output some HTML for each individual ninja. So then, first of all, let's pass this array through into this component as a prop. So we'll call this prop ninjas, like so, and set that equal to this dot state dot ninjas. So all we're doing is referencing this array right here and passing it down as a prop. So now inside this component over here, we will have access to that ninjas array. So let's just grab that first of all. I'm going to say const ninjas is equal to this dot props. And by the way, this is just like saying const ninjas is equal to this dot props dot ninjas, right? It's the same thing. It's just that we're using destructuring to do it. So anyway, we've grabbed that ninjas property now off this props object. So we have that array stored in here and now we want to output it to the DOM. We want to cycle through those ninjas and output some HTML for each individual one, which looks like this. So how are we going to do that exactly? Well, the way we're going to do it is by using the JavaScript method called map. And what the map method does in JavaScript is take an array and it maps that array to a new array. And that's what we want to do, right? We want to take this array and we want to map it to a new array, which will be an array of HTML elements, one for each ninja. So we're going to return some kind of small template like this for each individual ninja in this array. And we're going to store all of those snippets in a new array. Then we can output that array of code right here in the template. So let's do this up here, just below where we grab the ninjas. We'll create a new constant and we'll call this ninja list. So this ninja list right here, this is ultimately what we want to store our new array full of HTML elements inside. So we'll set that equal to ninjas, which is the original array, dot map. And inside, we take each individual ninja as we cycle through it. And this is an arrow function right here. And we perform a function on that individual ninja. Now, we return a value inside this function right here. And this return value is the element which is popped into the new array. So right here. So what we want to do is return some JSX code, some HTML for each individual ninja. And that is going to be the template for that individual ninja. Now that template is going to look very much like this thing down here. So let's grab that and paste it up here. All right, so let's scoot that in. So now then what we're doing is cycling through our ninjas array. We're mapping it to a new array. And for each ninja inside this array, what we're doing is returning a bit of template for that ninja. So now our new array is going to look like an array of these things right here. One set of JSX for each individual ninja. All right. So what we want to do is instead of referencing just name, age and belt, we need to reference ninja.name because this is the item that we're cycling through each time around. So we get that individual ninja each time. So we can say ninja.name, ninja.age and ninja.belt. All right. 
So that's pretty cool. We're returning this JSX and we're storing that JSX uh, for each ninja inside this array now. So all we need to do is output that array down here. So first of all, let's create a div with a class of ninja hyphen list like so. And inside that div, all I'm gonna do is output this array because that's gonna be the list of elements. So let's output that in our curly braces since this is dynamic content we're outputting. So ninja list, which is just a variable name right here, which is storing the array of this stuff. We're outputting that and React and JSX is gonna know that we want to output this sequentially. So for each ninja that's stored in this array now, we wanna output this template code and it's gonna do that for us. So let's save this and head over to the browser. Okay, and now we see for each ninja, we get that template code. We've mapped through those, created the new array where each element inside that array is that snippet of JSX for each ninja, and we've output each one when we output that array right here. Now, this is almost done, but if we go to the console, we should get some kind of warning or error. And you can see this error right here, each child in an array or iterator should have a unique key prop. So what it's saying is each one of these here, this should have a unique key identifier, this surrounding element right here. And that is so React can identify which ninja this is. Because if you think about it, when we change this data over here, React is gonna update the template and recycle through the list to determine which ninja was removed. And so therefore it can remove it or add it to the DOM. So what it's saying is for each ninja, when we have this template, I want you to give the surrounding element right here a unique key that is specific to that ninja. So if you delete that from the state at some point in the future, then I know which one to delete from the list right here. And it can do that efficiently then. It can perform that manipulation of the DOM very efficiently if we give this a unique key. So to do that, dead simple, all we do is say key is equal to something and this something has to be unique for that ninja. So that something is gonna be this ID. So you can see here, each one has a different ID. So all we need to do is pass that unique ID into this key field. So ninja dot key like so. And now the first one is gonna have an ID of one, the second one two, the third one three, etc. So let's save that and view this in a browser and we still don't have a unique key, so let's just go back. And that's because stupidly I've said ninja.key and not ninja.id, which is actually the property name, ninja ID. So let's save that again and view it in a browser. And now we don't get that warning over here. So that's all fine now. Okay, so that's how we can cycle through data. We get the original array, which is here, ninjas. We can map through that array. We receive the individual ninja, which represents each individual item in that array. Then we perform a function for each individual ninja. Inside that function, we return a bit of JSX, which we want to output for each individual ninja. So it cycles through those, stores that JSX in a new array called ninja list over here. Then finally, we output that ninja list down here and it outputs that whole list of JSX for us. So there we go, pretty simple, right? That's how we loop through data and output it in React.